Hello, my dear friends from Cambodia. TVA Thursday, a very good afternoon. My name is Louis, CEO and founder of FomoPay, a Singapore payment company and a fintech company based in Singapore, but providing one-stop digital payment solution and financial inclusion solutions to Singapore and the regional ASEAN countries. I'm very honored to receive the invitation from Mr. Thomas uh, from Cambodian Association of Finance and Technology to come and share my personal experience and my company, FomoPay, and hope my sharing today could inspire you a little bit and you can have some takeaway which can uh, light up your upcoming weekend. All right, so let's start. So as a founder of a financial institution, FomoPay, in Singapore, such a regulated market, I faced a lot of question when I firstly decided to start the business, which is also the first question I would like to share with everyone before I uh, in my presentation today. Number one, should I start my own business or should I quit the job? Before I started FOMO, I was working in one of the largest international card schemes and facing the merchant to help them on the payment receipt uh, on the payment business every day. So back in 2015, uh, some of my merchants, they come and ask, Hey, Louis, even though we have been accepting your credit card, right, for many years, but right now we realize in the market, there are more and more people who like to pay using the digital wallet. So even though you're from the largest credit card uh, schemes, but are you able to help us? to accept the digital wallet in my website or in my physical outlets. So back in 2015, the digital wallet is very new and a lot of people are questioning whether this could become a mainstream payment uh, method. So what I did, even though I, I was still working in the card scheme, so I say, fine, I will use my, uh, uh, you know, uh, my uh, after work time to provide the consulting service for this kind of big merchant to help them integrate the e-wallets like WeChat Pay. After we, I saw more and more these kind of requirements from the big merchant, I realized, hey, maybe digital wallet is something to grow and it's something for the upcoming new generations because all the users for the digital wallets are the young millennials uh, who are more tech savvy, right, compared to the card users who are more uh, I would say uh, 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 more well established uh, and more kind of financially stable. So I started to do more research on digital wallet and realized back in 2015 is so called the era or first year of the digital wallet payment in our industry. The Apple Pay came into market by end of 2014. Google Pay, Android Pay all launched in 2015 from China the WeChat Pay, Alipay start to grow the international business back in 2015 as well. So that year is the first year that in the market, we start to see more and more digital wallets. And it's a new payment mode, which a lot of people don't understand. A lot of merchants are very susceptible about this kind of new payment method. So I face a question. I do see the opportunity about the digital payment, but many people say no. So should I quit my job or well-established job in the credit card schemes and start my own business or should I stay? That's the first question um, which is uh, which I need to answer myself. Then I realized my mentor tell me, speed to market is always the key to success. And you're young and you have, you have there's n not, not much you can lose. So no harm to try. Even if you fail, you can come back and still work in the industry, right? But if you succeed and take off, you might uh, find something more valuable. That's why I took the advice. I quit the job and together with two other uh, co-founders, we started uh, formal pay back in 2015. So our vision from day one, even until today, is to provide the one-stop digital 
wallet and payment solution to the merchant and financial institutions so that they are not only accepting the credit card payment, which they already have in the past 10 or so years, but also to accept the new digital payment. We are one of the first in the region to do this. And a lot of people, especially my colleagues from the car scheme, are telling me, you know, digital wallet is not going to take off. It's definitely not a proven uh, business model. And trust me, after two or three years, you will be back to work with us again. So that's the pressure I took. And that's the choice I made. And we together started Fomo Pay and all the way until today. So to, until today, Fomo is one of the largest mobile payment solution provider in Singapore and also in the region. We are servicing over thousands of the merchants to help them process uh, close to uh, over 100 million uh, every year uh, to facilitate the payment flow and cross border solution. And also today, we are sitting in the National Payment Committee, SGQR Task Force, in Singapore, uh, in Singapore to help develop the national QR standard. So if you come to Singapore next time after this COVID, you will see the wide adopted digital QR payment in Singapore from the SME, like the hawker centers, street stores, to the big merchant, like hotels or restaurants. So that kind of a decision if I look back, which is one of the most right decision in my uh, entrepreneur journey. And that's the start. Then the second uh, question I want to share with you, which is critical to us during our uh, startup journey is, should I, com should I take the investment from the VC or strategy investors, or should I just continue to work and to accumulate the capital and to do it slowly so that we can still own the control of the company. We can still, you know, uh, just, uh, I mean, don't need to uh, be, uh, don't need to have other people to come and tell you the, the different kind of strategy. So uh, that's the second biggest question which we face during our journey. So to take the investment or continue to run ourselves. So that question, also, I went to uh, to ask from my friends and my mentors, and then they also give me another S, which is skill, right? Do you remember the first question? is B. Now the second one is skill. My mentor tell me, for business, skill is more important. And only if you have skill, you are able to lower down your marginal cost, you are able to uh, conquer the market shares, and you're able to see a different kind of value chain compared to what you are doing right now. Even though you might break even, you might do a good job uh, at a smaller scale, but if you cannot scale fast, there will be other players with uh, stronger capital investment uh, who will catch up uh, uh, will catch, catch up on your business, or they might even use lower price to kick you out of the market if they want. Uh, we have seen this in different kind of industry, right? Uh, so with the support of the capital and the investment, you are able to pursue a faster scale and you are able to quickly um, solidify your market positions. So after a, a, a long time uh, consideration, uh, we as a founder team uh, decided to uh, look for, uh, to accept the investment and until now, we have uh, more than two rounds of investment. And until recently, we are acquired by the financial conglomerate AMTD Digital, which is from Hong Kong and also the grant sponsor for this uh, for Singapore FinTech Festival and also the fourth consecutive year uh, larger sponsor for this event. Um, so just want to share uh, as a founder, when you are looking at your baby, uh, which you grew up from day one, and one day you will, you will take the investment, you will uh, have more people uh, to come in. They might have different kind of opinion, uh, uh, maybe some from industry, some are not. So it need to take time for you to adjust yourself and adapt to the different kind of uh, uh, magnitude of the business. When you are dealing with the skilled business compared to a small business, we see more opportunities. Right, like right now, uh, by joining AMTD Group, 
uh, of their ecosystem partners, we are able to offer the bundle solution, not only payment, but also like the uh, uh, insurance solutions, like the wealth management solutions to our merchants. So we are able to provide a one-stop bundle financial solution to the merchant, especially during the COVID-19, uh, to help them get out of the hard situation. Compared to before our investment, we are only providing the payment solution for the merchant. But on the other hand, as uh, uh, fast growing startups, when you are getting to a new different kind of scale, you need to deal with a new uh, management team, you need to deal with uh, new ideas, you need to deal with a new corporate governance. So that I would like to say that will be a good uh, lesson, right? It's, uh, it's challenging for sure, because when you start from scratch, and you suddenly join a big organization, you will definitely feel different kind of culture uh, difference. But as long as you can quickly adapt to it and catch it, you will realize you are actually riding onto a faster moving kind of platform than, and there will be a bigger platform, so a new kind of exposure for you. So for my friends uh, who are listening to this sharing today, if today you are also facing this question, whether to continue your own business with 100% control by yourself or to take the investment and to look for the new skill, trust me, in this time, take the investment and scale up your business. And that will give you a totally different kind of uh, 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 opportunities and different uh, kind of business exposures. Then moving on to the third question, which is also the last question I would like to share today with my uh, personal experience, is should I continue our company's vision, which we set from day one, or change just because the market situation is changing, just because there will be new revenue stream opportunity comes up? So should I stick to our original vision, or should we change? So that's the third question I would like to share today. I mean, it's also the third S I want to share with everybody, sustainable or sustainability. So along our way, there will be many new business opportunities coming up in the past six years. Uh, for example, even uh, our day one, our original uh, vision is always to provide the one-stop digital payment solution to facilitate the financial inclusion for the business and financial institution, and also to promote the cashless society. So our vision is this, right? But along the way, there'll be many people who are coming and tell you, hey, you have this kind of new opportunity which can leverage on your existing business and you can make a lot of fast money. For example, the ICO or crypto business, which was very popular back in 2017. So there are different kinds of temptation along the way, but by the time we make the decision. We don't want to change the original vision. We don't want to be distracted by the uh, new uh, temptations or this kind of short-term investment or short-term visions. Look at those ICO, which was very popular back in 2018 or 2019. But now most of them, they are out of the market and they keep silent. Uh, so that kind of story uh, due to the interest of our time, I may not be able to share much more details on that part, but just want to share. So so this kind of short-term temptation is something you will continuously to see during your startup and your venture journeys. But just be sure to yourself, people can give you advice, but you and your team are the ones to make decision. You will take the pride or consequence for your own decision. There will be a lot of options and temptations along the way, but just ask yourself and be true to your heart and continue to make the right decisions and to make the sustainable decision for a business. In this world, it's more important to stay relevant and longer in the industry compared to make a short term of fast money, which uh, which you might be distracted. So that's the third story I would like to share today for sustainability. All right. Uh, I do see the the message from the committee. There will be a, 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 a short time uh, left, but I I would like to to wrap up my my presentation today, which is just 
remember this as if my friend in front of the camera right now, if you are doing your business or you are still considering whether to do your own startup business, speed, skill, and also sustainability. Stick to this principle as, and you will find much easier to make the decisions. And right now in uh, Cambodia, uh, especially in the fintech industry, we see a lot of opportunities. Like back in uh, October, November, Cambodia Central Bank is one of the first regulators in the uh, in Asia market to launch the CBDC, uh, uh, which is a project one call, right? So the CBDC will be a new challenge and also a new opportunity for the financial industries. So we do foresee a lot of opportunities uh, in this area. So you can just pay more attention to this and stick to that. And also just yesterday in Singapore, our one of the largest local banks, DBS, also officially announced to set up the crypto exchange in Singapore, uh, which is kind of officially uh, uh, promoting or supporting the crypto uh, business. There will be new opportunity along the way, regardless crypto, regardless uh, CBDC. These are just some of the new trends we will see in this area. But there are much more. Okay, so back in 2015, maybe we, everybody is talking about the digital wallet. Some people challenged by that time, but until today, I believe we all agree that digital payment and digital wallet is kind of pervasive and a must and established payment behavior not only in Singapore and Cambodia, but also in ASEAN countries and in the world. So what will be the next for the next three to five years? Will it be CBDC? Will it be the crypto? Or will it be some of the digital banking where the new opportunity will arise? That will be an open question for you to think of. And those are the areas that for me and for my counterparts in Singapore and in uh, Cambodia are all paying attention. That I hope that you can have some takeaway from today's session and just remember those three principles and wish you all the best for your own uh, ventures. And we are formal pay, fear of missing out. And it's the best time to reflect and wish you all the best. Back to you.